looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a deck called Bontu Shaper as it tries to combine the 4 mana World Shaper with God Eternal Bontu to draw a ton of cards. So the way the combo works is if we have a World Shaper in play, 4 mana for a 3-3 that says whenever World Shaper attacks we can put the top 3 cards of our library into our graveyard and then the important part, when World Shaper dies, put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped now if we read God Eternal Bontu, 5 mana for a 5-6 with a menace, and when Bontu enters the battlefield we can sacrifice any number of other permanents we control and then draw that many cards. So if we have a World Shaper in play, play Bontu, we can sacrifice all our lands and the World Shaper that's in play, which will result in us drawing a card for each land we sacrificed and a World Shaper and any additional creatures we might have sacrificed. And then after drawing all those cards, a World Shaper will trigger and return all the lands from our graveyard back to the battlefield, which also includes all the lands we've just sacrificed to Bontu. So this is the 1-2 combo in the deck that allows us to draw a ton of cards. And of course, in addition to returning all the lands we've just sacrificed, we also get to return all the lands that were already in the graveyard. And we've got a lot of ways to mill ourselves and put lands in the graveyard. So still Fisher Supplier and Glowspore Shaman, for example, can help us put additional lands in the graveyard. And of course, World Shaper attacking also mills us for three, so that's another method of putting a ton of lands in the graveyard to get them all back when World Shaper dies. And then all those extra lands can be used to cast expensive spells, sacrifice to Bontu to draw additional cards, and we've got some nice utility lands as well, like Memorial to Folly, that can be used to return creatures from the graveyard. And of course, we've got a bit of a graveyard theme as well. So let's take a look at our entire deck list. At 1 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Stitcher Supplier, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one zombie, and when Stitcher Supplier enters the battlefield or dies, we can put the top 3 cards of our library into our graveyard. So a great way to mill ourselves and put the lands and creatures in the graveyard, so we can then return them once again. And also makes for a great sacrifice target for our Spark Harvest and for Vraska. And also we can sacrifice it to Bontu to draw additional cards. So just having those additional bodies in play to sacrifice is nice as well. Then we've got the full four copies of Lanor Elves to help us ramp, since we are trying to cast some expensive spells, so doing it faster thanks to Lanor Elves is a nice benefit. And then we also have three copies of Spark Harvest as a nice cheap removal spell that we can potentially cast for one mana to destroy a creature or planeswalker. And as an additional cost we have to sacrifice a creature as well or pay four mana. So we can just pay five mana total to destroy a creature or planeswalker. But since we have so many sacrifice targets we can easily play it for one mana. And it also makes it a nice cheap removal spell after having drawn a ton of cards with the World Shaper and Bontu combo. Sometimes we just need to be mana efficient when it comes to dealing with opposing creatures and planeswalkers. So being being able to play this for one mana is a pretty big deal. And then we also have the full play set of Glowspore Shaman, 2 mana for a 3-1 that mills the top 3 cards. And then we can also put a land card from our graveyard on top of our library if we need to hit our land drops. Or if we want to return a Memorial to Folly to maybe return a creature from the graveyard, if that's an important plan. So a pretty versatile card and also just a 3-1 that beats down pretty hard. So against the control deck they will eventually need to answer this. Then we also have the full play set of Elvish Rejuvenator as a nice ramp creature, 3 mana for a 1-1 one, one that when it enters the battlefield lets us look at the top 5 cards of our library. We can reveal a land card from among those and put it on the battlefield tapped and then the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. So it helps us ramp, helps us fix our mana in a way and also provides a 1-1 one, one body that we can sacrifice to our various sacrifice outlets like Spark Harvest, Vraska, Bontu, you name it. So just a great tool in this type of deck. And then we get to 4 mana where we have the full play set of World Shaper which is an important piece of the puzzle. And sometimes we also just want to sacrifice it right away to get a ton of lands in play. And we can easily sacrifice it using all those different sacrifice outlets. And then we also have two copies of Raska Golgari Queen, which is also great in this deck, helping us deal with opposing threats. Can also take out the various three mana planeswalkers like the Fairy, Narset and Sahili. And then can also just draw us additional cards with the plus two sacrificing cards we don't need. And then the minus nine ultimate ability can also be game winning. And then of course we've got the full play set of God Eternal Bontu, which is the other main card draw engine alongside World Shaper. And then we've got quite a few curve toppers since we are also ramping quite a bit. Three copies of Find Finality, which is quite versatile. Find can return creatures from the graveyard back to our hand, so we can maybe assemble the Bontu World Shaper combo that way. Since of course we are milling ourselves quite a bit with Supplier, Shaman, World Shaper. So we are seeing a lot of cards in our graveyard that we can then return with Find Finality. And that's also the reason why these curve toppers in the deck are all creatures. So we can return them with Find Finality or with Memorial if we need access to 
to them. And then of course Finality can also be a nice sweeper against Go White aggro decks. Then we have Multani, which can grow quite large in this deck as it counts both the lands in play and the lands in our graveyard and gets plus one plus one for each one of them. And we can also return Multani from our graveyard back to our hand, paying two mana and returning two lands we control back to our hand. So that's another way to get Multani back from the graveyard. We've got a one of Izoni, Thousand Eyed, which is a six mana to three with undergrowth. And for each creature in our graveyard, when we play Izoni, we get a one one black and green insect creature token. And then for two mana, we can also sacrifice another creature to gain one life and draw one card. So Izoni helps us go wide and swarm the opponent and can also draw a ton of extra cards. And then we also have a one of a Lothless Giant, which is kind of our finisher of choice. Seven mana for a 6-5 with undergrowth. And when a giant enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target opponent for each creature card in our graveyard. So that can easily deal more than 10 damage to help us close out the game. And between all the memorials and the find finalities, we can easily get access to our one copy of Lothless Giant when we need him. Then looking at our mana base, we've got three copies of Memorial to Folly, which is an important piece of the puzzle, allowing us to return creatures from the graveyard, and we can also get it back with World Shaper. Then we've got five swamps, seven forests, all the black green dual lands. And finally, we have two copies of Reliquary Tower, which is a sweet one in this deck, since we often end up drawing a ton of cards with the World Shaper plus Bond 2 combo. And Reliquary Tower allows us to keep as many cards in hand as we want without having to discard to hand size. So that's another one of the benefits of staying in two colors, is that it allows us to play a colorless land like Reliquary Tower. But of course, there's a lot of other utility lands we could consider as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. So one card we don't want to see is a Cry of the Carnarium. Since that card prevents all the self-mill from Stitcher Supplier as well. We seem to be pretty good at drawing whichever cards our opponent make us discard with Thought Erasure, which is a, a nice skill to have. I think I'm just going to hold it for now. All right, interesting. Some good mills. So if we hit a land, then next room we can find for Bontu and cast Bontu. Hopefully no bell haunts. Was hoping for a memorial to get back Bontu. So now the World Shaper dies, we can get back Memorial, which can get back Bontu. So I don't actually hate just letting this die. Ooh, hello. Um, getting this back now doesn't seem necessary. We can wait until end of turn. In case they have more discard. And then next turn we can try and go off with Bontu. And draw ourselves some additional cards. So we'll get back Bontu. Not sure how many lands I actually want to sacrifice here. 
but the creatures can go. This is a tricky part, knowing how many lands we actually want to sacrifice. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this should be enough. All right, now what? Just play Rejuvenator. Could also play Memorial. So we can activate it next turn, get back maybe World Shaper. And this is fine. Well, that works. And thanks to our Reliquary Tower, we don't have to discard to hand size. Narset can be a problem if we're trying to draw cards with Bontu, so I'm happy they didn't play it before, but Vraska's a nice answer to the three mana planeswalkers like the Fairy and Narset, and also have Spark Harvests as nice answers. So I'm not sure how many Kaya's Wraths we need to expect from them is a the question here. I think I'm just gonna send Bontu and Narset, see what they do. Don't really mind if Bontu dies, and if Narset dies... We don't need to Vraska minus, otherwise we might. Scorn to bounce spawn to, sure. So let's see. I guess we can both Vraska minus kill Narset and play Zoni. And this plays pretty well around like the fairy minus. Otherwise, if we play Multani, that doesn't line up all that well against the fairy. Could have played Stitcher Supplier first, get one or two extra insects. Not sure if that's necessary here. So we've got 18 cards remaining. Gotta be careful that we don't mill ourselves. Is there a Lothloth Giant in the graveyard yet? Nope. So that would be an easy way to close out this game. Alright, so how do we want to play this? We can play Stitcher Supplier, see what we mill. If we find a Lothloth Giant, that would maybe change our play. can also sack the Supplier to Vraska. Still no Lothless Giants. So we probably can't set up lethal this turn. Unless we draw into Giant with Izoni. So let's start by attacking. Send everyone at our opponent's face. Except for these two. And we can sack whichever one gets blocked with Izoni to draw additional cards as well. And then second main we'll see what we want to do based on how this goes. We're just gonna go for the giant next turn. And instead we'll sack some stuff and then hope to draw the giant naturally. Well, there's a giant, but I guess now we could get gotten by a Thought Erasure. Well, 
Although we still have Memorial to get him back. So I think the play is just to keep up Memorial. And I guess we can still play an additional Lenor Elves. Alright. Don't need to discard your hand size thanks to the tower. And we've got double Memorial to make sure we can get back Giant and play it. So I could have considered sacrificing the token they bounced with the fairy, but it's not gonna matter here. Let's just play the giant. Bam! And that's why Lothoth Giant is in the deck. Got the combo lined up here. Just need to hit a black source with Rejuvenator. Facing Merfolk. Well, Find Finality could be pretty good too. We've got Vraska to maybe kill a Merfolk Lord. I don't know, this is close. Like, we could play World Shaper, hope to draw land for Bontu, draw some cards. We could play Vraska, kill the Deeproot Elite. But we've got Find Finality as a sweeper, so I think just progressing our mana is a fine way to do things, which means Vraska sacking Rejuvenator could work, or just play World Shaper, hope to mill some lands, and then get those back. I think I'll play the Shaper. I'm gonna hang back, even though we could maybe sneak in one damage with the Rejuvenator. Alright, Lanner Elves can potentially ramp some more. For now we can attack. Since I want to mill some lands with the World Shaper. And if they do get the River Sneak above 4 Toughness where it doesn't die to Finality, we can always Vraska minus. So it's relatively safe. More River Sneaks. Do have to be careful that we don't die next turn. Although we can just Finality to wipe the board. Which seems like... A decent plan here. So we could do the combo with Bontu, but we can do that next turn since we can put counters on the World Shaper. So I think we're probably better off attacking with World Shaper first, so it doesn't shrink down to the fine finality here. Take action. Could also kill the World Shaper, so we get additional lands in play. But I like the idea of comboing with Bontu next turn. Silvergill revealing Skydiver. Do have to be a little bit careful that we don't die to the Flyer, but we still have Raska lined up. So we'll attack. Mill ourselves some more.
And then I'm going to quickly go into the options here, disable auto tapper and go into full control so we can float the mana we want to. So I can play Bontu and then make sure to keep up as much black mana as possible. Sacrifice all our lands and the World Shaper. World Shaper dies and returns all the lands from our graveyard to play. And now we have the option of Spark Harvesting the Skydiver, which is why I kept up the black mana. Um, not sure if that's necessary. We're still at 7. Even if they grow this twice, we're still not in danger. So I think I'm okay just passing. And then I can disable auto tap or enable auto tapper again. All right, let's get in there. Even if they flash in a Merfolk Trickster, we're not in danger. And we still have a Spark Harvest, should they have a weird counter spell here. Spell Pierce will pay. And next turn we could do the combo once again. And basically draw our entire deck. And that's gonna do it. Sweet. This seems fine. Might use a Shaman's ability to put a land on top. Alright, so we already have a third land. And we have a Rejuvenator which can find an additional one. I think I still want a Swamp here. Just so we have the lands needed to play Bontu. But we do also want as many lands in the graveyard as possible when the World Shaper dies. Let's hit for three. Do they want to counter the Rejuvenator? They don't. Find a Woodland Cemetery. Alright, don't really mind. So we have double memorial in the graveyard to potentially get back. And we've got a pretty real clock in play here with the uh, Glowspore Shaman. So eventually your opponents will have to answer the board. Let's lead with the supplier. Could play World Shaper. Feels like they might have a counter spell. But we still have fine finality to get it back. And at least it survives a Cry of the Carnarium. And if they want to go for a Chemistry's Insight. And they want to counter World Shaper, they'll have to decide. So we have potentially two powerful plays available. That's fine. Land is good. So we can find Bontu and World Shaper. Play World Shaper. Hope it doesn't get exiled. And then we've got two Bontus to try and go for the combo.
and here we want to make sure to mill ourselves first with the stitcher supplier and then get lance back with the world shaper and we might play this reliquary tower if we don't have one so we don't have to discard to hand size and then still play Lanner Elves with the floating mana. So we've got another World Shaper Bontu in hand in case we need to try that again. Still have three Spark Harvests somewhere in our library that we can draw towards to deal with this Liliana. And in the graveyard, nothing too exciting to get back at the moment. Izoni makes six insect tokens. Um, Bontu can get blocked pretty easily. So kind of a tricky spot. Vraska can kill the 4-4 zombie. We really want to draw towards a spark harvest, so we don't let the opponent draw a million cards while dealing with their creatures. Could attack first, but we'll see if this resolves. Alright. And we can keep the original one, so we can still attack if we want to. And then... I don't think we need to put that back, since we've got two copies in hand still. Sack all this. I could have floated some mana and sacked these lands as well, but I'm not entirely sure yet what I'm going to do this turn. Alright, so we did find Spark Harvest for Liliana. I guess Rejuvenator plus Spark Harvest is fine. 17 cards left still. Spell Pierce, ouch. Well, that sequencing did not work out. No attacks. Oh well, I've got a few tools in hand to work with. Might just be able to cast a giant twice to win the game. How much mana do we have? 15, 16 when we play a land. Might just have to dig for another Spark Harvest for Liliana. Which we could pretty easily set up. Yeah, I think it's probably safer than... ...getting all our lands destroyed by Liliana's ultimate. I'll leave one memorial untapped for now, I think. Sabotage... So we can play another bond to draw into Spark Harvest and still cast it. And this one I'll put back. So how much are we drawing here? Probably like 10-ish. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, something like this is fine. And 
And then... Don't really want to play more Stitcher Suppliers, necessarily. Since otherwise we might deck ourselves. So I'll just go Lanor Elves, Park Harvests. Can't really play around Spell Pierce if they find one with Ascanta. Hope this works. If they find Spell Pierce, we're dead. Oh god. Well, that's unfortunate. Listen to my symphony of death. Guess we want to keep this one. Yeah, it's gonna take us a while to get up to seven lands again to kill them with the Lothal Giant. It's possible there was some combination of, like, milling stuff to kill them with the Giant on the spot. Hand seems keepable enough. It's a little bit slow. Only the Lanerals to ramp us. But we're on the draw. So what does this hand need? I like an Elvish Rejuvenator. It's not a great hand. I think I'll go to six. Right, this is a bit better. And I'll keep a land on top. What card am I most looking forward to in M20? Um... It might be the new Sorin at 3 mana. Build some sweet vampire decks. Although there's a lot of interesting cards in M20 to try and build around. Alright, what are we doing here? Could play World Shaper. Don't necessarily expect Absorb, since that card has fallen out of favor, but you never know. Potent might be playing an outdated Esper list. Dovin's Veto can counter Vraska, but can counter World Shaper. So I think I just World Shaper here. We'll attack first. And even if they counter this, we still have Memorial to get it back. Right, opponent is playing Absorbs. Guess they haven't been on the receiving end of the ferry yet. Vraska can kill Narsets. Eventually we can get back Multani, which doesn't die to cast down at least. Although Multani is not the best against opposing Teferi's bouncing him. There goes Raska. It's not a bad one. Only one swamp in the graveyard so far, so we might be better off playing the Shaman before playing World Shaper and having it killed by the cast down. Don't think I need to put lands back. And now there's also Bontu in the graveyard that we can maybe get back with Memorial. Island means that Podent can't play a Bell Haunt. And they also can't play a Chaos Wrath. And they also don't have double black for Cry. Yeah, it's not bad. So now I don't mind if they kill World Shaper.
they have another absorb, that's fine. Means they're not casting Chemistry's Insights. Right, not even using the cast down. So not sure what their plan is here. Alright, now they're gonna use cast down. So we're timing. So let's attack and then play Bontu. And if this resolves, I'm okay cashing in the Lenor Elves. Because they might play a Sweeper anyway. And then how many lands do we sacrifice? Um, one more should be okay. And I'll keep the Shaman to force them to use a Sweeper instead of just using a spot removal spell on Bontu. Cast down the Shaman. Alright. We've got our memorial to get back. World Shaper, perhaps. This isn't a fight you can win. Rejuvenator can finish off the ferry, potentially. So what are we doing? Can start with a glow spore. And then just go Lanner Elves, Bontu, sack some stuff. Seems fine. Something like this. I do want to keep some mana in place so we can use a memorial and then potentially play a four drop afterwards. But I want to sack the small stuff that could potentially die to a sweeper. And again, keep the shaman since that pr hits pretty hard. So next turn we have enough mana to use memorial and get back and play world shaper. And then we have a second Bontu lined up, although we have to be careful that this Narsa doesn't prevent us drawing additional cards. Opponent takes two, so either they have a Dovin's Veto they want to keep up or a removal spell for the Shaman. I guess it could also be D-Spark. Right, that works. So sacking Memorial, getting back World Shaper seems fine. If they despark it, then we don't get our lands back, but we get to play another Memorial. I guess never mind. We have to play the Forest if we want to play the World Shaper here. Could just play more Bontus and Glow Spores. So if we play Glow Spore, we're gonna mill Bontu, but it's probably okay. Can also get back Multani and play Multani. Also lines up poorly against the D-Spark. I think I just played a Glow Spore. This presents lethal next turn. And then I'm not gonna put anything back. Just play Memorial and then say go. And then end of turn we can sack Memorial getting back. Maybe World Shaper. And in the meantime our opponent has to deal with these two Shamans. We are one mana short of playing Shaper and Bontu in the same turn. Contempt, sure. So we could also use Spark Harvest to get all our lands back. Do have a decent chunk of lands in the graveyard, so that could be worth it. So just like play Stitcher Supplier, play World Shaper, use Harvest to kill our own Stitcher Supplier and mill some more lands and get them all back with World Shaper. Don't hate it. 
We'll see what we mill first. I don't know, maybe it's just better to play Bontu here now that they're tapped out. All the options are pretty good here. We suspect they might have a D-Spark in hand, since we don't know why they took two damage a few turns ago. So, whichever four drop we play is probably going to get exiled if we let them untap. I think I'm going to go with a fancy play. We could get punished if we're going to need to Spark Harvest to kill a Planeswalker next turn, but... So we'll sack a creature. Kill World Shaper. Sacking Supplier. That's a lot of lands in play. I guess I'll keep the Force in hand in case they have like a discard one effect, like a Bell Haunt, you never know. There's the Fairy. But if we have a giant in the graveyard to get back, our opponent's just dead, and there it is. So unless I have a counterspell. Memorial gets back giant, play giant, opponent's dead. Guess we can attack first. Do you want me to phase you out of time? We definitely have the mana to get back giant again. Not sure if we have the mana to sack the second memorial and replay the giant right now. Might be a couple mana short. Chemisters. They're gonna need a pretty specific counter spell here for just two mana. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So we don't mind playing a grindier game against some of the control decks out there. Since uh, we can grind pretty well, thanks to all our memorials, world shapers getting back memorials, find finalities getting back all sorts of creatures, and drawing a ton of cards with the Bontu plus world shaper combo as well. Do we want to make any changes to it? Multani is one of the more questionable finishers in the deck, just because it lines up so poorly against spot removal and against bounce effects. But it is great against like aggro decks, for example, where it can close out the game very quickly, the reach is relevant against flyers, could potentially just play a second giant instead of Multani. Izoni can also be something else potentially, just helps against go wide decks being able to go wide ourselves sometimes. If we're afraid of aggro decks, then we could also consider the uh, Crawl Foragers, which can gain a ton of life. So if we're playing against a lot of mono red decks, then Crawl Foragers is a pretty good tool against that type of strategy. But it's a little bit weak against the more mid-rangey and control decks where gaining life doesn't really matter. Still have Raska that can gain a bit of life as well. I've been liking the Spark Harvests just as like potentially one mana removal spells after drawing a ton of cards with World Shaper plus Bontu, just to make sure to deal with problematic creatures or planeswalkers. Plays well alongside cards like Stitcher Supplier and World Shaper. Vraska has been amazing, could even play a third copy potentially, just because it plays so well with Supplier. Can sack our World Shaper to go off right away. And also great against all the three mana Planeswalkers out there. And then of course you could also add a third color, maybe splash some blue for Tamiyo. There are some options for sure. But I've been pretty happy with the Reliquary Tower addition as well, not having to discard to hand size is pretty useful after drawing a ton of cards, and uh, could potentially add a fourth memorial since it is one of the key cards in the deck. But then again it also comes into play tapped and doesn't synergize with the Woodland Cemetery, so can't have too many. Alright, that's gonna be it for me today, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.